But hey guys, in this video, the Brilliant Mystery is going to be writing standard form and taking you through lots and lots of examples of how you can do that as well. Now this is a sort of thing that comes up in your maths and in your science quite a lot, so it is a core skill that we need to get right. There are 15 different examples here. Work through slowly so that you can follow all the steps or put it on two times if you want to go a little bit faster. You can jump into this video wherever you feel comfortable. And then when you're done with that, there are thousands of examples, practice questions just waiting for you on my website. we're going to write these five numbers in something called standard form and before we answer these five questions we're going to talk about what standard form is and why we use it. So I'm going to write a number down I want you to when I write this number think about how long it takes me to write and think about how you would say this number out loud. So we're starting off with a 5, a 9, a 7 and a 2 and then we're going to have some zeros Okay, so there's the number. So, are we going to be able to say this number out loud? Probably not. How long did it take me to write? You know, a good 20, 30 seconds. And so, what is the number? This number is the mass of the Earth in kilograms. So, if you're a scientist, this may actually be a number you have to work with. Now, a scientist isn't going to write out this really long, ridiculous number. They're going to write a number that looks like this. They're going to write 5. 9.72 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. So that's representing exactly the same number but without writing a massive list of zeros. Now how do these numbers mean the same thing? Well let's count up the number of zeros we had. We had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 zeros. So you might think, oh, shouldn't it be to the power of 21? But as well as the 21 zeros, we have the 2, the 7, and the 9. And then you'll see that we have a whole number 5 in a shortened version, and a number starts with a 5. So what we're saying is we have a single digit number, 5. We have three decimal places and 21 zeros, which makes 24 altogether. And one of the rules of standard form is that you always write a single digit number. You're only allowed to write in the units column. You're not allowed tens or hundreds or thousands, because then we run the risk of getting one of these really long numbers again. Always going to be in the units column, but you are allowed decimal places. And then the times 10 part just tells you how many place values away from the units we are. So that 5 is 24 places away from the units. Okay, now I'm going to show you another number. And again, it's going to take quite a while to write out. So let's have a go. Okay, so again, with this number, it's going to be almost impossible to say it. Again, it is a weight. And this is the weight of one hydrogen atom. So again, it's a measurement that a scientist might need to use, and they're absolutely not going to write out a number so long. So what a scientist would write instead is 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. Now, again, it's written as a single digit number with some decimal places. Let's count up how many zeros we have. So one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. So again, you can see connection between the power that we're using and the numbers in the question. This time the decimal places are not included in the twenty-four, so the six and the six are not included. And if we look at both of these, it's all to do with the position of the units. So in the first example, the 5 is 24 places away from the units column. And it's the same thing with the smaller number. The 1 is 24 places away from the units column. And given that the 6 and the 6 are on the opposite side, they're not included. And then as you can see, if it's a small number and it's 0 point, we're going to have a negative on the power. 
One last thing to mention, I did find it surprising that the two random examples I chose, the weight of the Earth, or the mass of the Earth rather, and the mass of one atom of hydrogen are both the power of 24. I think that's just a coincidence, but yeah, I was quite surprised by that as well. So moving on to the questions, we're going to think about what method we're going to use here. So the first thing is identify the number that you're going to have in the units column, and that'll be the first number in the question. So we know that this question is going to have a six, and then it's going to be times 10 to the something. Every single standard form question is represented by multiply by 10, because then we can up the number of place values our number system works off tens, so we're going to times by 10 to get into the tens, times by 100 to get into the hundreds, times by 1,000 to get into the thousands. So this is the way that we show it. Now, after the six, we have got two places. So that means it'll be six times 10 to the two. Let's do the same thing for question two. So firstly, identify the first number, which is going to go in the units column. There's no other numbers, so there be no decimal places here. It's always going to be multiply by 10 for our standard form. Let's count up how many places. One, two, and three. So the answer will be eight times 10 to the power of three. If you don't believe me, type it into your calculator. That will give you 8,000. Now let's look at the next number. So again, identify the first number in the question, which is an eight we are going to be multiplying by 10. And let's see how many places we have after the eight. One, two, three, four, five. So it'll be eight times 10 to the power of five. Now we do have five zeros here and a power of five. In the previous question, we have three zeros and a power of three. Just to remind you, the power doesn't tell you how many zeros there are. It's how many places after that first number. And we'll see with the medium questions, we're going to have some extra numbers in here. And you'll see that it won't always be the number of zeros. Question four is a smaller number, but it'll be exactly the same method. We're going to highlight the first number, and that'll be the first non-zero number, which is a two. So let's write that down. It is always going to be times 10, no matter if it's a big or small number. And then we're going to count the number of places before the two this time for a small number. And we have one place. So this would be 2 times 10 to the power of 1. We wouldn't normally write to the power of 1, but this is standard form, so we have to have all the elements present, so we are going to keep the 1 there. Now for the final easy question, identify the first non-zero number, that is a 4. It's standard form, so it'll be times 10, and then we're going to count the number of places before the 4, that'll be 1, 2, 3, four stopping when you get to the units column so that'd be four times ten to the power of negative four moving on to the median questions we're going to use the same method so let's find the first non-zero number so we have a seven in our first question so let's write the seven down and then an extra bit for the median questions we are going to preserve all the other numbers so we can see there is an eight so we're going to write seven point Eight. We're not going to write 78. Standard form always is a single digit number, only using the units column and nothing larger. But if you do have any additional detail, like the 8 in this case, you can put those on as decimal places. So it's standard form. We'll be multiplying by 10. And let's count up the number of places after the 7. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it'll be 7.8 times 10 to the 5. Again, it's really important to note, I'm not counting the number of zeros. There are four zeros and it's the power of five. I'm counting the number of digits after the seven and that does include the eight. So it's power five, not power four. That's a common mistake. Now let's look at question two. Again, the first non-zero digit is a seven. So I'm gonna write down the seven and then any other digits that could be added on afterwards. And I want to write in the eight and the nine. Now, because there is a zero before the eight and the nine, we will include the zero. The zeros in the middle are going to be written down. It's standard form, so we're multiplying by 10. And then we're counting the number of places after a single digit number, the seven, the number in the units column. We have one, two, three numbers. 
So it's going to be times 10 to the power of 3. Moving on to question 3, it's still the same method, even though it's a smaller number this time. The first non-zero digit is a 6, so let's write that down. And any extra numbers written on decimal places, so we have the second 6. It's standard form, so it'll be multiplied by 10. And now because it's a small number, we're going to count in the opposite direction. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 places, stopping when we get to the units column. And because we're counting the opposite direction as a smaller number, it'll be to the power of negative 4, not positive 4. Now let's look at question 4. Let's look for the first non-zero digit, which is the 6. So let's write 6 down. Any other digits will be written as decimals. So we have the 8 and the 5. It's standard form, so we're multiplying by 10. And we'll count up how many places it will be to get back to the units. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it'll be times 10 to the power of negative 4. Question 5 works the same way. So our first non-zero digit is the 6. So let's write 6 down. And then let's write down all the rest of the numbers. So we have the 4, the 8, the 0, and the 4, written down in decimal places. We're multiplying by 10 for our standard form. And let's count the number of digits before the 6. There's only one. So the 6 only has to move one space to be in the units column. That'll mean it's the power of negative 1. Now, moving on to the hard questions, you might look at these and think yourself, hang on a second, these are already written in standard form. So what am I meant to do here? Well, actually, none of these five questions are written in standard form. They just look like they are. And the key is standard form only has the units column filled in. And the first question, for example, has five units and it has one 10. So it's not in standard form if there's anything written in the tens column. So what do we do? Well, the first thing to do is to copy down the digits, the one and the five, and to copy down multiply by 10, because all standard form questions multiply by 10. But we're gonna leave the power blank for now. and We'll have a look at what we've got. If this was in standard form, I wouldn't have 15. I would have 1.5. And if I had 1.5, I have made it one place value smaller. The one was tens, and now the one is units. So it's moved by one place. The number has gotten smaller. So if the number's gotten smaller, then the power is going to get bigger to make up for it. Because we make the first part smaller, we're going to get a completely different answer. So we have to make the second part bigger, so we still have the same. That means that 6 will become a 7. And now we've done that, we now have the same number written in standard form. Again, if you're not sure about it, just write 15 times 10 to the 6 into your calculator, write 1.5 times 10 to the 7 in your calculator, and you should get the same result. Question 2, I'm going to follow the same method. So let's write down the digits first, the 8, the 1, the 2, and the 2. I'll leave it at the decimal place because we're going to do all that in a moment. We're going to change it. It's definitely going to be times 10, but I'm going to leave the power because we're going to be changing that as well. If this is going to be in standard form, it would be 8.122. So let's compare that to what we had in the question. The question's 81. We want 8.1. So to go from 8 units to 8 tens, that's moved one place. So we're going to change the power by 1. Now, we've made 81 smaller to 8.1. So if we made the first part smaller, the second part will be one bigger to compensate for that. So it would be to the power of 5. So our answer is 8.122 times 10 to the power of 5. Now let's look at question 3. So again, following the same method, write down the digits, the 4 and the 1. I'm going to leave off the zeros at the end. We'll see why in a moment. It'll always be multiply by 10. If this was standard form, it would be 4.1. Again, only the units column filled in. And what we have in the question is 4,100. So how do we get from the units column to the thousands column? Well, we'll have to move one place to the tens, a second place to the hundreds, and a third place to the thousands. So we've made the first number smaller, 
so we'll have to make the power bigger. So instead of negative 9, we're going to make that three places bigger, which would be negative 6. And be careful here, if you add 3 to negative 9, you get negative 6, you don't get negative 12. Negative 12 is smaller. you are taking away 3 to get to negative 12. Question 4, again, same method, write in the digits, the 9, the 2, the 6, and the 7. We're going to be multiplying by 10, but we're going to be adjusting the decimal place and adjusting the power. Now, if we look at this, we want the 9 to be a single digit number, so we want 9.267, and it's actually in the hundreds column in the question. So to get that to the units, that'll be one, two places over to the units. So we need to make the 900 number uh, two lots of 10 smaller. So making that smaller, we have to make the power bigger. So the negative six will go up by two to negative four. Now for question five, we've got to write the digits, the three, the eight, the five, and the four. We're going to write down the times 10. And we're going to leave the decimal place and the power because we'll be adjusting those. Now we want this to be a single digit number only with the units column. Then we need the decimal place after the three. Just remembering the eight, the five, the four are in, over in the decimal places, so we're not thinking about those. Now to make 38 go down to 3.8, we're going to have to divide by 10, so we're making it one place value smaller. So we're making it one place value smaller. We have to make the answer one place bigger. So we'll go from negative five up to negative four. Now I've done most of that using mental arithmetic. Let's do one written version just to make sure we know what's happening. So let's look at question three. We've got 4,100. And if we're going to write that in standard form, then we can only have numbers in the units column and nothing in the tens hundreds or thousands. So the four will have to move down into the units and the one will have to move after the decimal place. So how many spaces has that moved? The four has moved one space from thousands to hundreds, two spaces down to tens and three spaces down to units. So it's moved downwards three spaces. So that means when we have times 10 and in the original question it was times 10 to the negative 9, if we've taken 3 away from the left side we're going to be adding on 3 to the right side. So the negative 9 will go up by 3 to negative 6. Ouch. Mm, I'll be too crammed.